Welcome to Foldit Lab Report number 17. I am BKEP, recording this remotely with my colleague Ian H. We are still staying at home as much as possible while we wait for COVID-19 vaccinations to roll out to everyone. If this is your first time discovering these videos, we release these videos on the first of every month to tell you more about the science behind Foldit. Let's start with some news. Uh, this month we have exciting new lab results about protein designs from Foldit players. Toward the end of 2020, we were able to get back into the lab and resume testing of some of the symmetric Foldit designs from Foldit players. These are protein designs that are intended to self-associate, which means that if we make a bunch of protein in a test tube, different copies of this same protein should stick together and form a repetitive, symmetric arrangement. In the lab, we bring your protein designs into reality by encoding your protein sequence in a strand of custom DNA. Then we insert that synthetic DNA into bacteria. Since bacteria already have all of the necessary machinery to translate DNA into new protein, the bacteria will replicate and produce a bunch of our encoded protein. After that, we can purify that protein into a sample that we can test in the lab. We have lots of different tests that we can use to evaluate protein designs in the lab. Some of these we've discussed in previous videos and in blog posts on the Foldit website. Once we've established that our protein is soluble, we want to understand more about how these proteins are folding. One technique is to use something called circular dichroism, or CD, uh, to measure how our proteins absorb polarized light. This tells us about the helix and sheet content of our proteins. Just like polarized sunglasses absorb polarized light from the sun, it turns out that structured biological molecules also have minute polar optical qualities. We can also evaluate the size of our proteins by passing them through a dense forest of tightly packed beads. This is particularly useful when studying symmetric assemblies because this tells us whether our protein molecules are forming small monomers, they don't associate at all, or if they're forming large disordered aggregates, or if our proteins are forming well-ordered, moderately sized assemblies of an intermediate size. Finally, we have another technique that we haven't discussed before on the Foldit blog. This is called small angle x-ray scattering, or SACS. In a SACS experiment, we aim a high intensity x-ray beam at a sample of our protein in solution. And we can measure how the x-rays are scattered by particles in that solution. Each x-ray scatters at a different angle depending on the silhouette of the particle that it encounters. The combined scattering of the x-ray beam tells us about the size and the shape of particles in the sample. With small globular proteins, like previous folded monomer designs, we would expect a Sachs profile that corresponds to a, a small regular sphere, which is not very informative about how the protein is folding. But with our larger symmetric designs, the Sachs profile can tell us if our particles are extended like a rod, or if they're flattened like a disc. Or it can tell us if our particles have a hole in the middle, like a donut, or if they have bumps around the edges. When we carried out Sachs experiments on folded design trimers, we found that some of the proteins have a Sachs profile that exactly matches the expected profile we would get for the designed trimer shape. This is super promising. It seems likely that these proteins are folding up and assembling exactly in the shape that Foldit players designed. Of course, we won't know for certain until we can get a high resolution structure of exactly how these protein molecules look. So next, we'll be attempting crystallography experiments. This is awesome news, and it's a good indicator that our latest symmetry puzzles with the improved H-bond networks and the BUNS objective seem to be helping you to make great protein designs. So thank you for all your continuing work on these difficult puzzles. And with that, let's go to some puzzle updates. First puzzle update, we have been continuing our designable linker series. We are seeing some great progress in these designable linkers. With every puzzle, we learn more about this problem and the latest results are looking very promising. Again, the goal of these designable linker puzzles is to join two protein domains into a single big protein while preserving the precise orientation of those two starting domains. In order to lock in this orientation, the design linker needs to be well folded and rigid, and it needs to have lots of secondary structure like alpha helices and beta sheets. If 
any part of that linker is loopy and unstructured, then the two protein domains will flop around. In the linker designer puzzle so far, we've been trying to join two antiviral protein domains that bind to the pandemic coronavirus's spike protein to block infection. Recall that the coronavirus spike protein is a trimer clustered in groups of three on the virion surface. We want to link two of these binding domains so that they can grab onto two targets at the same time, effectively creating a single big protein with double the binding interactions. A protein like that would have a much better binding affinity for the virus and could be an exceptionally sensitive diagnostic tool or therapeutic. In our second puzzle update, we have been expanding symmetry design into tetramers. These are design puzzles where four protein chains would come together in a tetrameric assembly. Note that higher order symmetries are more difficult to design because we have to be more precise about the binding interface. If our designed tetramer interface is off by just a small angle, then our protein might prefer to form pentamers or hexamers in the test tube instead of the intended tetramer. We are also encouraging you to experiment with different protein folds in your symmetric designs. Symmetric assemblies designed by scientists tend to be strictly helical bundles. It's because helical bundles are more straightforward to design and we have a very good idea about what works and what doesn't. However, scientists have had a much more difficult time when they try to include beta sheets in their designs. We know that we can use Foldit to accurately design proteins that form monomers, that is proteins that don't assemble. And in fact, we wrote a whole paper about this in 2019. We now think that we can use Foldit to design protein assemblies of any fold, not just helical bundles. And with that, let's go to this month's design of the month. Uh, this month we have a design from Silent Gene. This is from Puzzle 1941, Symmetric Tetramer Design. Um, in this design, we have a very nice symmetric tetramer with a mixed alpha-beta fold. So this is nice. We have uh, some beta sheets in this design. Um, so we're not looking at just helical bundles. Uh, if we look at just the asymmetric unit, we see that our protein has a nice hydrophobic core, which is good. It should just fold up stably. And the surface, we have blue polar residue sprinkled all around the surface, which is good. So we hope this protein will be soluble. Um, but at the same time, there are some exposed hydrophobic residues at the interface, which should make for tight binding between the symmetric um, subunits. We also have a very nice hydrogen bond network, I think. Yes, yeah, so we satisfied this buried aspartate residue here, which is very nice. And we also have a buried asparagine at the interface, which is also mostly satisfied. Um, it looks like uh, these two polar atoms at the very center are not quite making the hydrogen bond that they need to. Um, but otherwise, that would be very nice. We would satisfy this asparagine completely. Um, I think the one thing that I would worry about a little bit is we have a couple of buried unpolars in this design. Um, so one is in this glutamine residue here at the interface. It participates in our hydrogen bond network, uh, but we do have this one hydrogen bond donor that is not able to make a hydrogen bond. So this will be a little bit unfavorable, which is not great. Um, the other thing to look out for, especially when we're including beta sheets in our um, assembling designs, is that we have to watch out for these edge strands that pack against a hydrophobic interface. Because these edge strands have polar atoms that need to make hydrogen bonds. And if they're on the protein surface where they can make hydrogen bonds with water, they're perfectly happy. But when we try to pack an edge strand against an interface, we can end up with buried unsatisfied atoms that can't make hydrogen bonds. They're, they're buried at the interface here. So this will be another unstable, buried, unsatisfied atom. Um, those are the only two critiques I think I have of this entire design. It looks very nice. This is an excellent hydrogen bond network. Um, the only exception being these couple of buried unsats. Uh, I think this is a very promising looking design and I would encourage uh, everyone to continue to try to think about ways to 
organize mixed alpha beta folds into symmetric assemblies like this such that you don't have any buried polar atoms that cannot make hydrogen bonds. So this is a great design from Silent Gene. Please share your favorite designs with scientists using the Upload for Scientists button in the Save menu. We love to see what you are most excited about. And if you share your designs and sign our username sharing agreement, your design could end up in one of these videos. That's all we have for this month. In February, you can look forward to office hours with Siren and with myself. Uh, as always, thanks for watching, thanks for playing, and we'll see you next time. <music>